First Bible presents God Gives Manna. After crossing the Red Sea and being rescued from the Egyptian army, the Israelites danced and sang songs in honor of God. They were very happy to be safe. Moses and his sister Miriam said about how God had saved them from the Egyptians. They played instruments and danced happily. Then the day came for them to continue their journey. They continued to follow the pillar of cloud from God. They walked through the desert for three days. During that time, they couldn't find any water to drink. They arrived at Mara. The place was called this because the waters were bitter and bad. If they drank that water, they would get sick. Seeing the water and knowing they couldn't drink it only made them thirstier. Then the people began to murmur against Moses and they asked, What are we going to drink? We are dying of thirst. In Egypt, we had water, fruit, and fish. Here, we have nothing. Moses cried out to God, and he showed him a piece of wood. Moses threw the wood into the water, and the water instantly became sweet. The people jumped into the water and drank. Moses told them, Always remember that God really takes care of us. Then the Israelites made it to Elim, where there were 12 springs and 70 palm trees. They camped there, close to the water. Soon came the time to continue the journey, and they reached the desert of Sin. It had been almost two months since they started traveling from Egypt. Once again, the people started to complain. They didn't like the burning hot sun. They didn't like the lack of water and food. They all complained. The community murmured against Moses and Aaron. What did you do to us? There is nothing to eat here. Now we will die of hunger. Everything is your fault. We were better off in Egypt. God will protect us, said Moses. Trust in him. But the people didn't pay attention to him. Then God said to Moses, I'm going to give you bread from heaven in the mornings and meat in the evenings. And I'm going to put you to the test to see whether you follow my instructions. The people should come out every day to pick up their daily rations. But on the sixth day, they will pick up a double portion, and they should save that for the following day. Mm -hmm. Moses and Aaron explained what God had said to the Israelites. That same afternoon, the camp was filled with quail. They all ate. The next morning, the land was covered with drops of dew. When the sun dried the dew, the people saw that there were white flakes of bread. Since the Israelites didn't know what it was, they asked each other, what is this? This is the bread God gave us to eat. Try it and eat it. The people called it manna which means, what is this? Mm -hmm. Afterwards, Moses explained the instructions that God had given them. Every morning, you will find manna on the campsite. Pick it up early and gather enough for each day. Don't save any for the following day. However, some people didn't listen to Moses. They tried to save some manna for the next day. The following morning, 
The mana they had saved had spoiled and smelled bad. The people who were lazy would not pick up enough mana for the entire day. The sun came out and melted the mana that was at the camp. These people stayed hungry until the next day. On Friday, Moses told the people to pick up enough mana for two days because God was not going to send them any on Saturday. Some people didn't listen. Because the mana had gone bad the other times they saved it, they thought it would spoil and be a waste the following day. However, it was not like this. And on Saturday, no mana appeared at the camp. At the end of the first week, the Israelites understood that they should follow God's instructions exactly to have fresh food every day. The entire community left the desert of Sin and camped in a land called Rephidim, but there was no water there to drink. And so, they urged Moses, Give us water to drink. The Israelites were thirsty and spoke against Moses. Why did you take us out of Egypt only to make us die of thirst? And so, Moses cried out to the Lord, and he said, What will I do with these people? All that remains is for them to stone me to death. God told Moses to strike the hill near Horeb with his rod, and water would flow from it for the people to drink. And so Moses did. There were people called the Amalekites who attacked the Israelites. Moses ordered a young man named Joshua to choose some men to fight them. In the meantime, Moses would be at the top of a hill with his rod crying out to God. Joshua followed the orders. A group of men went off, looked for the weapons that they had taken from Egypt, and they went to battle the Amalekites. But we don't know how to fight. Meanwhile, Moses, Aaron, and a man called Hur went to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But as time passed, Moses' arms got tired. So the Amalekites were winning. Seeing that Moses was tired, Aaron and Hur brought a stone and put it under him so that he could sit. Then Aaron and Hur held his arms so that Moses could remain steady until sunset. And that's how the Israelites defeated the Amalekite army. Yeah! <laughs> Days later, since Moses was the only leader, he had to solve all the Israelites' problems. There was a long line of people who wanted advice from Moses. This happened until Moses was told he had visitors. When Moses came out to greet them, he saw it was his father-in-law, Jethro, his wife, Zipporah, and his two children, Gershom and Eliezer. Zipporah and the children had returned to their land, Midian, before reaching Egypt, and her father had taken them in. Moses was very happy to see his family and father-in-law again. Jethro told Moses that he had heard about everything God had done for Moses and the people of Israel, and the way he had gotten them out of Egypt. He exclaimed, Blessed be the Lord, who freed you from the hands of the Egyptians and from the hand of the Pharaoh. 
Now I know that the Lord is greater than all gods. Then they had a feast to celebrate. The next day, Moses continued with his role as judge of the people. Seeing that Moses had a lot of work to do, Jethro said to him, What you are doing is not okay, Moses. You have too much work. You shouldn't do everything by yourself, because you and the people around you will get tired of it. The task is too heavy for you. And he advised him, You should choose a group of capable people, people who love God and despise ill-gotten gains, and appoint them as leaders to help you. Let them handle the easy problems full time, and the hard cases they can bring to you. That will lighten your load, because they will help you carry it. Ah. If you do this, and God commands you to do so, you will be able to endure it. Mm -hmm. The people, on their end, will go home satisfied. Moses listened to his father-in-law and followed his suggestions. <laughs> Later, Moses said goodbye to his father-in-law, who returned to his land, Midian. Then the Israelites set out for the Sinai Desert, the place where God would give the commandments to the Israelites. And that is where God establishes his mandates. Hey, comment, huh? <laughs> comment and subscribe below.